Hey I'm Max and welcome to this tutorial on how to make a fake multiplayer game with Unity. I will be showing how to do this in Unity and also using my previous tutorial on how to make a game where you are like a virus and you eat bacteria and other viruses. However, a lot of the tricks that I'm going to use can easily be transferred to another engine or another type of game. In this part, I'll do mainly the AI for this game in particular, but I'm going to use some tricks to make them feel more natural. And in the next part, I'll try to do the names and the leaderboards. So let's get started. First, for the AI, we need to keep track of all of the cells that we spawn so we can then use them on our AI. So first, I'll open my game script. And in the game script, I simply want to keep track of all of the instances of the cells that I create. So that later I can look through them without having to find them all again. So if I wanted to, I could simply use find objects of type every time on my AI. But this is very expensive for the computer, especially if you have like 40 AIs. Finding all of the other 39 AIs every frame, it can get pretty laggy. So it's better to just keep them in a list and then loop that list. Since we only have one game at a time, we can make it static so we don't need to have a game reference on every single one of our AIs. So I'll do public static list of cells. So we will keep them as a cell and we can simply call it cells equal to new list of cells. Then when we spawn an entity like our red cell, white cell or enemy cells, we can simply do game object O equals to this. And then right under, we can do cells.addO.getComponent cell. So we will add in the list the cell component of the entity we just created. So now we have our list of cells that is kept in the game object. The next thing we need is to add on our cell class a type of cell so we can know when we look through the cells which type it is. Because when we look at those cells here, there is no way to know if that cell is a red cell or a white cell unless we try to do something like get component, which is not efficient at all. So it's better to just do public enum and then do it say cell type. And then here we can put white, red or virus, just like this. And then in our cell class, we can add a public cell type, cell type. So now we can put a cell type for each one of our cells. So when we look through those cells here, we should be able to know each one, which type it is. And of course we need to set this cell type in our prefab. So if I go on my prefab for my enemy, you can see cell type white by default. I'll make it virus because the enemy is a virus. And also the player, I will make it a virus as well. Then the red cell, I will make it red and the white cell, leave it white. Now we can open up our AI script and look through the cells and make decisions based on that. So we can remove the change direction from the timer. We won't do that anymore because this is just random moving and obviously is not like a player at all. We will also create a public struct stimulus, which is a structure that I'm going to use to store the different positions and different strengths. So the AI can make a decision based on all those stimulus. So I'll do a public vector tree direction and a public float strength. Then on update, I want to look through all of the cells and make a decision based on that. So I'll do for each cell C in game.cells. Now I don't want to look at all of the cells exactly because some of them will be too far away. And when you make a fake multiplayer game, it's important to make it so the AIs don't do something a player could not do, such as see further than a player could usually see. So if a player only sees a certain distance away, the AIs should not see further than that. So I will add on my AI class a public float C range. So now in the forage, I'll do if the vector tree, the distance between the C that transform the position and the virus dot transform dot position is greater than the C range. So if the cell is too far away that we cannot see it, then we want to continue, which means go to the next element in the for each loop. So at the top of the update before the for each, I'm going to create a stimulus that will hold the stimulus that we will follow. So I'm going to call it the best stimulus. 
And then after the if statement, so if the cell is close enough, I will calculate the strength of this stimulus to this cell. So float strength is equal to, and then it depends on the type of the cell. So I'll start with zero, and then I'll do a switch C dot cell type right here. In our switch, we will set the strength depending on the distance and the type of the cell. So first case cell type dot a white cell. Well, first of all, we want the strength to be bigger depending on the cell mass, so C dot mass. But we also want it to be smaller depending on the distance, so the further away it is, the less important it is. But you can see here, we didn't set our distance as a variable, so we can just copy and paste this above as a variable dist, so we can reuse it instead of copy and pasting this whole thing. So the mass divided by the distance, so the bigger the white cell is, the more you're going to want to run away. And the closer it is, the more you want to run away. And the further it is, the less it is important. So the less you will want to run away. That's great. And as usual, a case needs to end with a break. Then let's take a look at the other case. So a red cell. For red cell, it's even simpler than this. We just have to do strength equals to 1 divided by the distance because red cells are simply the lowest priority so this will pretty much only get triggered if there is nothing else around you could adjust the number here to give it more priority like maybe five divided by distance would make it a higher priority actually i think i'm going to set it to two and see what it does then as usual you need a break and finally the case cell type dot virus which we are going to do kind of like the white but I will actually make it have a parenthesis at first and do virus.mass minus c.mass. So this is the mass of this AI and this is the mass of the cell that we're checking. So basically, the bigger you are compared to it, the more you will want to go towards it. But also the bigger it is compared to you, the more you will run away. So not only will this show the importance of running to it or away, but it will also go negative if you have to run away and positive if you run to it. I guess with that logic, we also need to have the white cell be a negative because we want to run away from the white cells, not to them. So just adding a minus before it, that's good. And then finally, we can do if the strength is bigger than the best stimulus dot strength, then we want to set the best stimulus to a stimulus with the direction that we are going in, which will be C dot transform dot position minus virus.transform.position and then the strength that we just calculated. Now you see we have an error here because we didn't assign our best stimulus by default so I'll just do equals to stimulus vector 3.0 and strength of 0. We also need to make the constructor for our stimulus struct so I'll just do public stimulus and do a vector 3 direction a float strand and then simply do this dot direction equals direction and this dot strand equals to strand just like this and we need to not forget to do the new before i always forget because unreal engine doesn't have that for structs but that's how it is with unity so a struct equals to new with our constructor so by default we set it to vector zero and zero strand and then if we find one with a strength greater than this, then we set our best stimulus to that, and then we just have to move towards our best stimulus. However, I need you to notice that the strength here goes negative if you need to run away, and this one is always going to be negative. But here we do if the strength is bigger than this. So if, for example, we have a minus 3, we really need to run away, and the best strength is strength 1, something that we might want to go towards. Well, minus 3 is not greater than 1. So we need to use mathf.abs, which will make it positive if it is negative for both of these to make sure that the absolute value of the strength is greater than the absolute value of the best stimulus, basically ignoring the negatives. And then finally, we want to set our direction. So our virus.move direction to be basically the best stimulus dot direction. But remember, if our strength is negative, we want to run away from the direction 
and not towards it. So we can do if best stimulus dot strength is less than zero. So if it is negative, then we want to set the mode direction times equal minus one. So basically invert it. Also, as someone pointed out in the last video, I forgot at some places to normalize the move direction. And that's simply because in the cell, in the update, we already normalize it every update. You could move the normalize in every single one of those ifs and also make sure that you do it in every other class. Every time you change the move direction, you normalize it. So here I would do something like this and then you could remove it right here. And this would be optimized, but I guess it doesn't really matter at the scale that we are at. So let's see what this gives. Okay, so I just tried it and I have an error that gets spammed on update. And the error is right here on this line. So can you guess why that is? It says object reference is not set. So basically there's a null here. The null is obviously not our virus because we set it and we know it works. So it is obviously the cell, but how can the cell be null? Well, it's because we add every cell that we create, but everything we create is not a cell. Our bacterias here are not cells. You can see if I open up bacteria, they are a model behavior of their own. So basically what we need to do is simply before adding it, make sure it is a cell. So we can do cell C equals to O dot get component cell and then do if C. So if it is not null, then we add C. So like this, this should avoid adding null cells. Let's try it again and hopefully this will work this time. And yep, it definitely seems to work except it doesn't. <laughs> So we can see an error happening now. It says the object has been destroyed, but you're trying to access it. So basically when we destroy a cell, we should remove it from this list as well. So in our virus class, I will go on die. And before destroying, I will simply do game.cells.remove. And then we remove this. So this will remove this cell before destroying it. And we can also copy and paste this when we eat something. So for example, when we eat a red cell, we want to do game.cells.remove the red cell before destroying it to make sure we don't try to move towards it after. And also in the white cell, so if I open up the white cell script, before it is destroyed, we want to do the same thing. So game.cells.remove this. So like this, we should no longer have deleted cells in our cells list. Okay, there, there's no error, that's a good sign. Okay, no, they're not moving around at all. So if we look at one of them, we can see the move direction is zero, zero, which basically implies that none of them have a strength high enough to replace the default one of zero, zero. And that is simply because I forgot to set my C range. So if I go on my prefab enemy, I go into my AI C range, I'll do, I don't know how big unity units are, let's say a hundred. That might be too much and yeah they're definitely moving now they look very confused so you can see them sometimes kind of jerking around i'm not sure why they do that so before we try fixing the errors in the ais first i got this error here after the game ended and that's simply because when we do game over we need to empty our cells list to avoid cells from the previous game being kept in this list in the next game and this is possible because the variable is static. So we need to do cells.clear. So this will clear all of our cells before restarting the game. So now we can draw a line to show what the AI is looking at. So first, if we look at the white cell, we can see the AI is looking at every white cell near them and running away from them. And if there are two, he juggles between the two and that's why he gets stuck like this. If instead we look at the red cell, so which red cell the AI is looking at, and we make it ignore every other cell, we can see they look at the closest red cell and go straight towards it. So this is very good. As soon as they pick up one, they go towards the other one. And finally, if we only look at the other viruses, we should be able to see that they go towards one that is smaller, but away from one that is bigger. So let's see if this works. And it definitely looks like it works. Some of them are running away. And see this one is running away this one is running towards it so you can see this one is running away and this one is chasing him 
So this is working great in my opinion. So now we just have to balance those three strands so that not only one of them is executed. So I think I will give a priority to chasing other viruses because this is the main source of growing and this is also how you're going to win the game. So I'll do 10F times this to make sure that viruses are pretty much always prioritized. Then I'll do 5 for red. And for white, I don't want to reduce overall the importance because it is important, but I want to make it so it only counts a lot if it is very close. So I'm going to do divided by distance times, let's say 10. Let's see how that looks. So obviously you adjust the values however you want. You might not even have a game like mine, but the point is to make the AI have a sort of good decision based on what he sees. So you can see they are chasing enemies. This one is chasing an enemy. I also want to reduce the C range for all of them. And actually when the player grows, his range of sight increases with the camera. So I could actually do something like C range equals to the virus.mass times a certain amount, like let's say 10. So this way the bigger the AI, the further it can see. I will also reduce here distance times 3, let's say. Let's see how that looks. They are really mainly chasing enemies but they're also kind of avoiding other things. Okay, so at this point, it's just a matter of putting the values that you want for your game. And one other thing that's important, before we move towards the best stimulus, we want to make sure that it's not zero. So if best stimulus dot direction equals equals vector three dot zero, then we want to return because otherwise the AI will stop moving if there's nothing around. So now we can see the AIs are chasing red cells, like this one. They're also chasing enemies, running away from other enemies, running away from white cell as well. See this one is keeping distance from both of them. And then he's going to chase this red cell right here. So they're doing pretty good. This one also just got one. So I think this is perfect for me. So here are my numbers if you want to copy them. Now here's the important part to make them feel natural. You can see that the each behave the exact same way. First of all, to make them act different, we need to have a public float array of weights. Then in the start, we will do weights equals to new float array. And then in here, we will put three random floats from, let's say, so I'll just copy this right here and I'll do, let's say, from 0 0.7 to 1.3. And I will copy and paste this three times. So these weights are going to be random on each AI. And then for the white cell, I'll do strength times equal weight zero. For the red cell, I'll do strength times equal weight one. And for the virus, I'll do strength times equal weight two. So now each AI should behave a little bit different in terms of priorities. So some of them might prioritize a lot more red cells, some of them might prioritize a lot more white cells, and others prioritize a lot more viruses. So you can see already some of them have different behaviors, and if you want that effect to be even stronger, you can increase the random range. You can see this one is trying to get this one, and it's not even running away, probably because its weight of virus is smaller. If you want, you can make it even bigger, let's say 0.4 to 1.8. So now we can see some of them have pretty weird behaviors chasing from way over there while other ones are not even running away. And another thing that we can notice is they each have very sharp turns. So you can see when they pick up something, they immediately turn around. But a real player would slowly turn around the time of turning the mouse and everything. So what we can do is give them a turning speed. So I'll do a public float turn speed and we can set it in the prefab after. And down here, instead of just setting our move direction to the direction that we want, we can change it. So here we can do if the best stimulus strength is less than zero, then we can straight up invert the best stimulus direction instead. And at the bottom, instead of setting our move direction, we can simply do plus equal the best stimulus direction divided by let's say 10F so it will only add a tenth of the direction that it wants. And actually, we don't want to add the overall direction, but only what's missing. So the optimal direction 
minus the current direction so this is what we are missing so we will add a tenth of that or I guess since we want to use our turn speed variable right here then we can do something like divided by a hundred and then times our turn speed now one last thing here vector 2 vector 3 that's a pretty easy fix we just go in our best direction and change it to a vector 2 and now the only thing here we have to change it to a vector 2 and here you could cast this to a vector 2 if you want to draw the line but I can simply comment it because I don't need to draw it anymore so now I need to go in my prefab of my enemy and the AI and set the turn speed to let's try 10 so it looks like 10 is still way too much it's still snapping around well you can see them kind of turn a little bit but it's obviously still way too much so I'll try let's say 0.1 so you can see with 0.1 they are kind of turning around a lot slower which is making them feel a lot natural you can see this curve right here this one just did that was amazing so you can see they're kind of curving around that is way smoother and makes them feel way more natural so you can see with 0.01 they are turning around way slower maybe even a bit too slow you can see this curve right here this makes them look a lot more natural than just snapping around so that's pretty much all I wanted to do for this part one basically making an AI that's good but also feels very natural with smooth turns and also different behaviors for each so they're not as predictable but you might also notice that none of them are going for the player and that's because in the AI right here we are looping through all of the cells that we spawned but the player was not spawned it was set in the scene so basically the player is not in the cells list right here so what we can do at the start we can do cells.add find object of type player controller so this will find the player object and then we can do dot game object so this is the player object dot get component cell so this is kind of confusing so we want to add the player so first we find the player so we find the object with the player controller so this is obviously the player then we get the game object so this will give us this game object player right here so we find the player controller then we get the game object and then we get the virus script on it so the cell script on the object I guess we could maybe just do find object of type cell but then if you add other cells by default in your scene then it could find those instead of the player so now the AI should react to the player as well so let's test it out so let's see if this one turns around and tries to eat me and you can see it's chasing me but the turn speed is way too slow right now but you can see it just turned around and you can clearly see that it's chasing me so if I move up you can see it follow me up and then if I go around you can see it turn and follow me so the turn speed on my AI's right now is way too slow I set it to 0.01 but you can see clearly that it works so basically the most important part of a fake multiplayer game is that the AI's feel natural if they start chasing something that's not in sight or they snap around very fast or they play perfectly it will be obvious to the player that this is not a real multiplayer game and it will also not be fun because it will be way too predictable so you can see this one even gave up chasing me this feels honestly just like a real player so hopefully you like this first part in the next part we'll add the names and the leaderboard so you can compete against these fake players if you like this video make sure to like and subscribe